Klaus, you are an absolute madman. 300 barbarians and 11 bat spells and a fireball as well. All right, Klaus, you got our attention. Let's see what we can do. Welcome to the upper bracket finals of the Coco Invitation. It was Klaus and Timper taking on Stars and Kazuma. And as you can see, Klaus is currently not only number one in the world on the Legend League leaderboard, but he's also number four and number nine. But Stars last season was number one and two. So no matter what, we're in for a treat today. Let's dive into this. If you're unfamiliar with how the Coco Invitational works, we have two players on each team. They will both take two attacks. So we'll have four attacks total. The other counts of the war are just placeholders. And as they play through, the players will be awarded with cash prizes if they can keep their attacks as creative as possible. So that's what we're going to see today. We're going to see attacks that are off meta. Maybe something new, maybe something very, very interesting. But let's see what Klaus does to kick us off today as he starts in with the war to the very top quarter here. And he's running giants and super giants here. We've got a bunch of wizards as well. So kind of an interesting line of troops here typically something that we would not see which is exactly what we're looking for in this tournament but he will go after the skelly donut to go after the expo the cc and the monolith and just work that warden into the very top i almost called it a warden walk there but it's definitely not a warden walk the warden with the race gem will be able to boost the damage of his owl and the giants but not his own damage so he'll make so that he gets the funnel formed and it looks like he's going to join it with the king and more giants up into the town hall area so he definitely wants to get the town down the queen will join it there and help Clear out the defense in the area and make sure that the king and the warden end up going inside of the base. Okay, I'm lagging a little bit here. Uh, that, that's, that's probably me, not him. So hopefully that subsides here. And then we can see what he does because I would be terrible for a uh, war like this of this magnitude between these players to end up being decided by a disconnect. But it looks like he's back on track now. It was just my internet lagging, which is good. I'd rather it be me than them. But he does get into the town hall area there with the queen going inside of the base right there. I thought she was going to go to the outside there and I thought the king was going to go to the inside. But they ended up switching places. But that's fine. Over to the left side, we see that the flame flinger was able to be set up there by the expo going down and he's got a bullet bounce over to the far right side as well that he's using to i guess redirect the king to go back in a little bit further there but the queen has the healer puppet there and she does spawn some healers and will keep on working through the town hall compartment the more that car she can clear the better off she's gonna be but it looks like she's engaged the defensive uh queen right there and she freezes to make sure that he gets through that and that'll keep the queen alive but over left the uh, champion is gonna go in right where the queen i guess are really the warden and the flame player are able to get the funnels formed to the left side of the base so looking pretty solid into that area but down south the king ended up wrapping all the way around he was not able to get lucky enough to engage the defensive world champion to get her out of the way. He's sitting on a bunch of giants and the wizard's still on standby. He's got the heal spell. Maybe he's just waiting for the world champion to cross through. He's got a couple of skeletons heading towards the flame flicker right now. That'll reduce a little bit of value off of it. But he does get them dealt with with the archers right there. The healers take an eagle artillery strike. That is a big, big problem that he probably didn't have accounted for here. And that world champion is going to be greatly hindered by that strike that's gonna hurt him really badly he's in the poison as well slowing down here a little bit can you get this still looks like he's got more giants deployed over the far right side going to the ricochet cannon the expo a lot of damage in that area but i don't know if that's a better or worse area than to go into the status shot so he needs to get that ricochet cannon down to the, at the top of the base there maybe he's still thinking that the world champion can potentially survive this but no with the scatter shot locked on to her and no way to relieve that damage you guys this one is looking like it's gonna go to a miss definitely an interesting attempt here from klaus and that's what we expect. We expect these players to push the boundaries on what is possible in Clash of Clans. 88% is the final for Klaus. Klaus's teammate Timper, if you don't know, was Rookie of the Year for 2023. He played for the team that was Rapata Game at the time. Now they play under the name Synchronic, but he actually switched teams. He's over there playing for Millicene MG now. So we'll see Timper in action in other tournaments there, but definitely keep an eye out for him. And I guess we'll see what he does a little bit later on in this match. But let's pass over to the other team here as Kazuma and Stars, which are Klaus's teammates over in Navi will now begin their attacks we actually see gaku on defense here which is their other teammate i think anybody who's familiar with the channel here is familiar with all the players on navi and so it's always interesting to see them attack their own bases but i don't know if you saw how many sneaky goblins were in this attack here this attack is almost purely sneaky goblins and that means that aside from a couple of healers there that are out of the warden 
and a couple of Yetis and wall breakers, there is no other army. The Sneaky Goblins have to take out a big chunk of the base here, and they cannot attack anything until after he gets all the collectors and storages down. He can go to the town hall, but he also needs to get all the way to the very core of the base here. And we, like, I'm looking at the base here, and I'm seeing around that centered inferno i see storages in single building compartments and that's a big big problem but he does get the warden to set up for the flame figure to make its way forward and so with the expos under control he gets the warden redeployed to the very top of the base there the king deploys the very bottom he's got the funnel to drive the king and he's got the wall breakers to get the king to go in and it looks like he will get the defensive road champion and the scatter shot compartment under control but he's got the cc in that area there, and the cc is going to get drawn by the king Looks like it is going to be a Lava Hound. Lava Hound and Archers and Headhunters pop out of there. And the King will get locked onto by the Monolith. He's not going to last much longer. Not getting a crazy amount of value out of the King here. But getting a sufficient, hope, hopefully sufficient amount. Flame Flamethinger keeps on working to the right side of the base there. But Lava Hound is going this direction right now. And that could be trouble. He needs to get the Town Hall down soon. He needs to find a way to get all... He got to find a way to use these Sneaky Goblins. Other than just a Town Hall taken. Obviously, the most common use of Sneaky Goblins is just clearing out a couple perimeter collectors and storages. And then sniping a Town Hall. But he's sitting on another 23 of them that he needs to find a use for. But he does get the war... Oh my god. Did you see the Lava Hound? Lava Hound was running away from the Flame Flicker after it opened up. And it ended up wasting a lot of the long range shots there of his Super Minions. But the queen keeps on moving with the warden. Looks like the warden somehow ended out in front of the queen. But he quakes that area as well. Try to move through it. But remember, there's still storages and the CC that the sneak goblins need to have go down before they can target anything else there. But if those buildings drop, then he can use them to start to pick up the backside uh, defenses there and attack them directly. And they will be invisible. So they'll have a much better chance of getting them down there. But he's about to engage the last storage there. Needs to get to the CC. Hog Puppet spawns there for the world champion. Rager up. He's got freezes. He's got more rages as well. He's actually sitting on a lot of extra spells right now. Now all the collectors and storages are down. He starts to use the goblins to attack defenses directly. And Kazuma is going the distance. I honestly would not have expected the mass sneaky goblins to get it done when we saw the giants end up with a fail. However, now it's time to pass it over to our rookie of the year 2023, one of the youngest players in all of Clash of Clans esports. Let's see what he can do here as he breaks out. Looks like Golem's Pekka's and a handful of hog riders got clone and a bunch of invisibility going for the bowler bounce bomb off of the town hall gets the inferno out of the way here but the tornado trap caught him right there pulled him in and he does end up getting hit by the blast as he gets pinned against the wall there and so he loses the bowlers earlier i have to wonder if he planned to clone them and make them invisible for even longer to try to get a couple shots into maybe bouncing off of those expos and taking some of the damage off but he's just gonna have to react to what he's dealt with right there he did fall right into a little bit of a trap right there that kazuma had set up for him and pretty common spot right there to try to trap something but it looks like he will run some basic hero equipment i did see a life gem onto the warden so we'll see if that life gem is going to be higher value than like a rage gem or a healing tome. But he will go ahead and... Okay, he's going to... Okay, you know what? He's going to use it with the hogs. That's why. Is he cloned the hogs? Yes, clone hogs. Clone hog bomb. In from the left side. Clones them up and makes them invincible with the eternal tome. And with more HP, they'll come out of that and potentially get a little bit further into the base right there. Getting that further down would be a very big deal. But he deploys the world champion right above that. World champion will start to wrap around towards the eagle artillery. And hopefully... She's okay out there, but the CC out of control a little bit right now. We could potentially get the the Phoenix to fight off that Inferno Dragon, but I think that the Inferno Dragon wins that fight. It does up top. The Royal Champion keeps on making her way through. Pops the Hog Puppet. Gets joined by the Warden now, and will make her way forward there, but she's headed into a lot of danger right now. She's definitely not clear into the back end of the base here, so he might be in trouble. If he can't get this, then we'd see... Two misses out of their side of the of the board. If we had a miss from Klaus and then a miss from Temper out of the gate, then they could be at a pretty big disadvantage. That last little block of defenses is a little bit too much. Cannot make it through. And it's crazy that these attacks are failing onto Klaus and Temper side when we just saw that mass sneaky goblin attack. And so now an opportunity to take a two star lead is presented for stars. Seven super barbarians, seven archers, seven goblins, seven wall breakers, seven balloons, seven healers, seven hogs, seven of everything. Stars is in. And I guess we'll see what he can do. 
with looks like pretty standard hero equipment there run the haste file and the hog puppet onto that royal champion we're seeing that a lot of the very top of the base there dropping a couple of balloons to go pick up an exterior archer tower there gotta have a very specific reason for doing that and that reason is the flame flinger so we can deploy in that area and start to make his way forward there can that flame flinger get the town hall down though he's got an earthquake he brought one earthquake that he can use to activate the town hall so that's what i imagine he would use it for but the queen will deploy over to the far left of the base there. The warden ends up going in with some of the healers. Actually, he had seven healers, remember? So he split the healers. He put some of them with the warden and some of them with the queen charge. But if we're going to do a double hero charge like that, you got to be very, very careful because the eagle artillery activates. Looks like it's activated right now. When you drop that many healers and two heroes, you end up having the eagle artillery start to rain down on top of you. So we need to get the eagle artillery down very, very soon. And even though the warden's running the rage gem, we will see his healing output increase there but his base damage will not change his own rage gem does not affect himself so he will eventually get to that eagle artillery but in the meantime at least he's under no damage right now so we can absorb those eagle artillery strikes there and he can make sure the queen is not the one that's taking those hits but the queen is very nicely walking her way through that left side compartment get her way into the inferno and looks like she'll be distracted by the cc for a bit there but she's fine she's looking healthy flame flinger still moving up top there but look at that the flame flinger almost got engaged by the king but he freezes the king and swarms the defensive king with headhunters not losing track he's got so many different things going at the same time but he could not mess up the timing of saving the flame flinger from that but the king steps his way through the king oh, where's the king going king <laughs> king king where are you going no god down all still standing all right well that's a is that a problem is there, is there enough fire on the ground right now to finish the town hall off is a question but the warden gets joined over to the right side and gets pulled in by the royal champion keeps on moving turn the warden walk into a royal champion charge the royal champion takes the healers and we'll try to get that model down a couple of extra hogs there he's kind of just throw it in the last little bit that he has in a lot of different spots here he's got hogs up on the top right he's got balloons over to the left he put an extra hogs at the world champion and now they're all converging one more multi-arch tower and it does look like stars gets it done with his seven themed army there seven of everything and a couple of swag spells it would be a little bit nicer if he had seven swag spells but you know what it's another triple and with that it is going to be a two star lead Four stars and Kazuma. They are doing incredible in this war so far, but we're only at the halfway point. All right. Klaus and Timper are looking to be in a little bit of trouble here, but let's see if Klaus can pull it back. <laughs> yes, Klaus, you are an absolute madman. 300 barbarians and 11 bat spells and a fireball as well. All right, Klaus, you got our attention. Let's see what he can do. Where do we start? Where do we start? Fireball. Level 7 on that. Not even a high level fireball. All of his other equipment is pretty much all the way up to max. But it looks like he will start with a bunch of our berries over the very top there. Going to the wizard tower. But they quickly get cleaned out there. We got, I guess, two wizard towers, two mortars, and a scatter shot fired away there. He's going to... Need some extra support there, and he gets it with the flames there. But he's deploying the flame player inside of the range of a lot of the defense right there, specifically next to the wizard tower and the mortar. So we need to keep everything distracted. So he has to continuously trickle in the barbarians to keep all the splash damage under control. But at the same time, we got to make sure that we don't accidentally line up a shot for the barbarians to be struck by the scatter shot, and then those shots to then splash through to the to the flame flinger and end up taking it down. But we see the warden now deployed down to the left there as he does get that area under control and the flame figure is safe and it can coast for a bit and the area is already tested for traps but the warden deploys all by himself there no healers no extra way to protect himself but he does just cut the funnel right there he lost a little bit of hp but overall he's looking pretty healthy the king will drag him into the base there remember he's got the fireball right there i have to wonder what he plans to use with that fireball but he could have gone after higher value equipment right there higher level equipment but this is what he chooses to do the queen deploys over to the left there she's gonna make her way towards the town hall the barbarians obviously would not have the punch to get the town hall down so it has to be the queen that takes it i think but she's got extra wall breaker she's gonna make her way through but the warden gets targeted by the single inferno he gets taken out that's not good that's not good that looks like it could potentially cause some problems here but he did get that fireball to go off there and it didn't really hit a crazy amount it got 
a uh, relatively low amount of value compared to what I was hoping. But guys, there's a lot of base left. There is an enormous amount of base left here. Klaus has a long way to go, but he's sitting on the 11 bat spells. They deploy over to the right. He's got him onto the multi inferno directly, freeze it up there to give him time for it to build. And there's not a lot over there that can stop this right now. He's throwing barbarians across the back side of the base. They're getting the wizard tower specifically under control. Keep the wizard tower under control. Keep the bats alive. 11 bat spells to work with. The queen steps away to the town hall. Pops her ability. Spawns her extra healers. Bats are going that direction. But the town hall goes down. And the monitor is engaged right there. Keeping the queen safe. More bats are going that way. It is a conferno. His world champion is still alive. She's getting the protection of the bats. The monitor goes down. But all the bats are going right into the town hall poison. And that means they're going down. But he's still sitting on a bunch of barbarians. Barriers. He'll start to swarm the back end multi archer tower, but the Queen's War Champion is still alive. Queen is taken. He's got it in the bag. 300 barbarians and 11 bat spells. And Klaus is able to get the base under control. And with that triple. If they can find a defense right now, they could be right back in this war. That might have been one of the most impressive attacks that we have ever seen out of Klaus. And we've seen some impressive things. But GG, Klaus. That was wild. And now with that one on the board, we'll send it back over to Kazuma and Stars. And it looks like Kazuma is going to be breaking out something a little less crazy than what we just saw. But he is going to be doing another attack here with a lot of giants. Giants, balloons, and healers seem to be the bulk of this army here. Bunch of wizards and a lot of wall breakers as well. I guess we'll see what he can do with this. But I feel like we're going to see a big hero charge. We do see the queen deploy to the very bottom base there. And she can start to make her way forward there with that frozen arrow and the invisibility vial. That is the equipment that most people are opting for. So a little less crazy to see what feels like a very, very standard queen charge compared to what we just saw. You know, if you... <laughs> How do you even compete with what we just saw out of Klaus? But he's going to attack Klaus directly here. He'll get the queen to go in, and we'll see if he can hold it together here. Because if he can get a triple here, then Klaus and Timper are going to be in a lot of trouble in the overall tournament. But remember, this is an upper bracket match. So regardless of the outcome here, whoever ends up dropping down will then be able to face off in the lower bracket matches. And if they win one match against whatever team emerges down there, then they would ultimately then re-challenge the winner of this match in the grand finals. So we could even, after the craziness of this match has already had, we could end up having this happen again in a grand finals. In fact, it could happen twice in a grand finals if the team from the lower bracket wins, which would be even more insane. Imagine a bracket reset in a tournament like this. <laughs> that would be insane. All right, anyways, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Looks like this queen charge is going to transition with an extra wall break over to the multi-inferno. Got the CC under control here. Kind of avoiding that core right now. He's got three more super wall breakers. So he could try to transition the queen to get into the artillery and those multi photos in the very core of the base. But it looks like he's going to instead transition her with more giants and wizards down the line. Working on the outside of the base there. Keep it under control. Up top, he does have the flame flicker open up and drop out the super minions. And the queen will then wrap around and get into the scatter shot there. Really, really good value for the queen. Honestly, it's some very solid value. But he does pop her ability there. Puts an invisibility. Wall breaks through. And will make his way into the heavy defenses there. But the town hall is still standing. He's kind of taking a risk on this one. Like The town hall is going to be one of the last buildings to go down. He doesn't really have a lot of force that can take it other than the queen. Maybe the world champion of the warden could get to it, but they're making their way forward there. Hog Puppet goes off there. Hates Vile and the rage with the, ra I guess the rage gem on the warden. Give them the extra output that he needs there. But he's stuck for a moment as he gets into the town hall area. Gets through the defensive king and he walks right through that roadblock and will, with the help of the diggy and the stun, take the town hall down. Stun the last multi-archer tower and the extra blues give the support for the backside and ladies and gentlemen it is looking very very good here for kazuma and stars to be able to take this win but we are not done yet we still got one more from temper and one more for stars as kazuma will sustain their two-star advantage and now back in the hands of our rookie of the year temper will be making his way in with a lot of super minions here only a couple of healers. Two healers. Okay. Timper's in. Two healers. Seven super minions. An electro dragon. A handful of balloons. Four lightning. Four quakes. Recall. There. Okay, okay, okay. 
Nice giant arrow shoots across the base there. Quake combines with it. Level 18 gets the healer puppets to spawn. Gets two quakes and two heals onto both of those areas. And then recalls the queen. But then leaves the healers for the healer puppet behind. And will redeploy with the warden right there to pick up those healers. Wow. <laughs> that was a lot of different things happening at the same time. But that was clever. And now that entire section of the base is crippled. He'll put an E-drag over to the left. He's got the log launcher making its way to the very bottom of the base. Did he put any tanking for that? I didn't see if he had tanking for it. I have to assume that there was some tanking out in front of the log launcher. But it will drop out some yetis. And we'll get the eagle artillery under control there. He's got baby dragons working on both sides of that. But up top, we do see ice schoolers popping down as the war walk continues. Balloons dropping up there. I see the king making his way in to go engage the defensive king over the very top corner. Does he have headhunters? Yes, he does. But he... Oh, there they are. He'll deploy them now. The queen will deploy over to the king's left flank there. Trying to drive the king inside of that town hall compartment. But the warden keeps on moving. Remember, the queen was deployed with the giant arrow and then recalled out and left her healers behind so she already has her ability having been used but he's still sitting on all the super minions as well let's not forget that all those super minions are still sitting on standby where our champion joins with the warden turns the warden walk into a row champion push and she's under heavy threat right there with the healer staying on the warden get the hog puppet there she'll pick up the core of the base there with the hog puppet and her haze file quickly search through those defenses freeze up engages the defensive road champion with his queen but she wins that fight and she will continue on i guess with the giant arrow giving her a little bit of extra base damage increase not really any more than any of the other equipment there but very very crazy attack there but guys looks like he's out of control he'll swarm the last couple of defenses here with the super minions warden is still alive has an apprentice warden there tagging along with him it is a triple for temper but man they're doing some crazy crazy attacks that was insane there was so much going on the attack there that was pretty that was pretty impressive to say the least as crazy as that attack was they are still facing elimination it is a two star to lock in the win here for stars and send him and kazuma into the grand finals of the coco invitational knocking klaus and temper down to lower bracket but after the crazy attacks that we've seen out of those two players even though they had some misses in the early parts of the war it does get me excited knowing that they're going to go down and get to play extra wars in the lower bracket. And that means we get to see them a little bit more before the end of the tournament. So very, very excited, but also excited to see Stars and Kazuma performing at such a high level and advancing themselves into the grand finals. All we got to do is lock in a two star here and with Sneaky Goblins as his main force, I think that is not going to be a problem there. I think you can get the Town Hall under control here. We just got to see if there's any hiccups along the way down there. He's got 17 sneak goblins. Not a crazy amount here. But if he is relied on them to secure the talent takedown, then he 100% needs them to not run into any problems. Because if you end up having anything go wrong down there, then he'll have to go to backup methods to get it down. And that right now is what Timper and Klaus are banking on. But it looks like the queen... Keeps their charge moving towards the Eagle Artillery. Getting through the defensive CC. There's more Sea Goblins being deployed. But over to the left side there, we do see a couple of extra standing collectors that could end up throwing off the pathing for the Sea Goblins that need to go in. But he does get them under, under control. He tests one more time at the Town Hall. He's sitting on seven Sea Goblins. He has to get the invisibility right here to make sure that the Town Hall goes down. If something goes wrong with the invisibility at the Town Hall, then we could end up seeing this swing the war. So it's all going to come down to trying to juggle that while he's still managing the rest of the attack. Now, he's delayed it for now. Getting the kill squad over the very top there. He's got a bunch of P.E.K.K.A.s going into that area there. He's got the Golems. Golems and P.E.K.K. Is there a Golem? Or is it all P.E.K.K.A.s? Maybe it's all P.E.K.K.A.s. But there's the Sneaky Goblins. They do get the Town Hall down. He's got the two-star on lockdown. And that means they're advancing to the Grand Finals. But can he finish this now? Because they're also going for a perfect war. And in a creative format tournament, to have a chance to go perfect is even more crazy than the attacks that they're doing. Because that's not an easy thing to do. But they are on track to do it if he can hold us together. The healers were not covered by the ward ability. Everybody else was. The healers are taking a lot of damage right now. But the queen steps through. She'll get that inferno under control. And then she can make her way through the jump. The jump is so perfectly placed right now. To span all the way from that intersection on the top side of it. All the way into the monolith compartment. And he's got a skeletal spell right there on standby. The right side. He does have the P.E.K.K.A. with a wall break to go into the town hall compartment. So he did get that compartment up there. He's got Valkyries coming out of his siege barracks right now. 
And they're going to pick up where the Pekka left off there, but he needs to get the defensive king under control. He's got a couple of straggly defense over the far left there. He puts in a hog and the blue, and he gets those under control, and the hog will sit inside of the range of the mortar there. But down south, the Valkyries keep on moving into the defensive Grand Warden, working on it. RC steps through. Hog Puppet is active. Swag and Queen ability, and swag some spells as well. Ladies and gentlemen, it is decisive. Stars and Kazuma are going to be advancing into our grand finals. Klaus and Timper, on the other hand, are going to have to go down, and it looks like their next opponent is Rakiras and Darkstar, as they were the team that emerged from the lower bracket. So if you're new here, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more, and we'll see you in our next video.